I have studied World War II history, tactics, battles, fortifications all of my life. I was in the army, I lectured on German and Russian tactics. And I thought I knew everything in all of the important parts of that war. A war that permanently changed the world. So much new world changing technology was created then. And much of it in secret German facilities hiding underground and run by the SS. Now I believe what I can see and put my hands on. And of course I understand propaganda, disinformation, black project, and the need to classify certain missions and documents. And I don't subscribe this to what mainstream have classified as conspiracy theories. So it'll be a hard sell for someone to convince me of Nazi UFOs and hovering bells. But the more documents that have come out the more I keep seeing words like nuclear bomb, hydrogen bomb, cyclotron, particle accelerator, remote control. Documents of secret labs in far-flung parts of Europe and all of SS General Kamala's secret research that went missing. Now it is quite clear that something exceptional was being done and everyone knowing have actively tried to cover it up since. Now that got my attention. People are still covering up these secrets today. And thousands of people died for them. So in this series, we are going to all of General Kamala's secret research facilities. We're going to follow the declassified documents and the trails of the SS General and the German weapons scientists and their facilities. I say, let's go take a look at all these locations above and underground and see what is actually there. It will make it much easier to gauge what would and could have been there, so I'm bringing a shovel and a Geiger counter with me. We are going to the German secret side of World War II, and together we can explore what's there. I will show you everything I find and I will share all my documentation. I will interview experts and those researchers who've gone there before me. And I will keep looking until we get some answers. Because if just half of what I have so far seen and heard of is true, the world will change when the truth comes out. It is fitting that we start our quest for German special weapons programs here at Wewelsburg. In the first episode, we talked about how the SS was in the center of this secret world, operating secret weapons and energy projects, so secret it's possible not even Hitler knew the full extent of them. And in charge of all of them was SS General Hans Kammler, a man of infinite power during the last years of the war, trusted by Hitler, trusted by Himmler, no question, praised by Goebbels, he oversaw all Air Force jets, rockets, secret weapons development production, construction sites, and labor camps. And a great place to start this journey would be at Himmler's castle. Wiebelsburg was Himmler's castle, an SS school and research center for the Annenerbe. Annenerbe, Himmler's dedicated historians and archaeologists. But also high-ranking SS members would meet regularly here at the castle. Now, I always did suspect that the Annenaber was doing more than just looking for a German Aryan past and measuring skulls in Peru or going to Antarctica. Their research was also the study of the real Thule and ancient societies, esoteric ancient texts, Sumerian and Hindi. And of course the study of the occult, which was fascinating Himmler. But it seems that General Kamla had a greater contact and involvement with the Ananaba that I thought before, looking for secret locations for them, as was specified in his letter to Dr. Bond. Now, Kamla was a pragmatic man. He was efficient and driven. And somehow I don't see him attending occult ceremonies. He was too busy for that. He was too busy for anything that did not directly pertain to his job, his SS duties, and his scientists, and his weapons manufacturing, production, and development. 
Kamla was tasked with developing and putting into production the second, third, fourth generation future weapon systems to think outside the mainstream science box and use any resources available to him. He had the support of enormous companies like IG Farben and AEG, had all the slave labor he needed. He built rockets and nuclear bombs, so how the NNAB fit is something we really need to look at more. Recently, historians have been saying that Sumerian texts contain descriptions of ancient superweapon systems and technologies. Now, I don't read Sumerian or Hindu, so I don't know. But it seems to me that besides his esoteric interest, Himmler was determined to search everywhere for anything that he believed could help Germany win the war. And just saying that, I can hear the late Jim Mars whispering in my ear that the Baghdad Museum, which was raided during the Gulf War, and all those Sumerian tablets that disappeared, that had been catalogued by German archaeologists just before they disappeared. But uh, that's uh, sure that is a coincidence, and I digress. Now, Heinrich Himmler took over Wevelsburg in 1933 and rebuilt it full of runes, large black sun inlay in stone on the Knight's Tower floor. Wevelsburg was originally an ancient castle that was owned by the King of Prussia. At the end of the war, Himmler sent an SS detachment to blow it up. They couldn't quite accomplish the task, but certainly destroyed some of it and set the rest on fire. Here at Wevelsburg, Himmler would host meetings with the highest-ranking SS generals for strategy and planning. After one such meeting, General Kamla sent a letter to Dr. Brandt, wherein he mentioned specifically the Riese project in Lower Silesia had to be completed before other projects could be begun. This is one of the first official mentions of the Riese project. The Riese and another project named Lothar, same place, same location, and another SS castle, was also mentioned in a ministry letter from Dr. Albert Speer, wherein he specifies the details of the construction in a briefing to Hitler. This makes Lower Silesia one of the most important SS manufacturing locations out of four mentioned in letters to Hitler and from Albert Speer, who took over after Dr. Todt in constructing for the Reich, working with the SS. So now we have to go and look at what it was that happened in Lower Silesia and Der Riese, because this is where Igor had mentioned projects such as the Glocke had originated. Here I meet up with one of the local historians, Christoph, who grew up here and used to work at the Riese complex. Ludwigsdorf is the place where the Glocke was supposed to have been created. Well, let me make it clear, I'm not here looking for aliens, Nazi UFOs, or even the bell in the modernized configuration it's been portrayed. I am here because we know that Kammler and his group were building something very, very specific here. Thus, we are looking for infrastructure that would support a massive secret military weapons program or other nuclear. We still need power. And coming into the valley of Ludwigsdorf, coming up towards the Henge, is a massive power plant that has been here for 40 years before the war, and that's a good place to start. From the mid-19th century, there's been a huge coal mine here. The whole area and underground is full of coal mining tunnels. By 1928, there was 4,600 people employed here. It was the biggest employer in the county. And of course, for the coal mine and the thousands of employees that worked and lived in the area, they needed to install a huge power plant to supply power for all of them. And as the mine produced up to 500,000 tons of coal a year, they needed massive rail infrastructure to transport them to consumers. In 1930, there was an accident underground where 151 workers died, and the mine had to close for a time. In 1940, Dynamite Nobel took over the Molke mine and some of the administration buildings and set up ammunition manufacturing. The power plant and infrastructure remained, thus this is a perfect place in a valley, secluded, to produce or develop anything. In 1942, Kamla's team moved in the valley and set up shop as well. 
The power plant ran until several decades after the war, but it's now dilapidated. On the road into the electricity plant, you get this. Overhead is a rail bridge. Administration, regular administration, work halls. But it looks like a maintenance building that's been here for a long time. And inside again, we find these roofing tiles that I seem to come across everywhere I go. Implication being that the Germans are using the same materials wherever they went to build. These buildings are certainly old enough, predates World War II. So did the SS come in here? Did they place a weapon manufacturing plant because there was power? Did they expand their power because they needed it for more research? Or did they do it because there was a lot of cold and uranium mines in the underground with large cavities where you can hide things? There was rail links to here. What looks like old rail buildings down here. But this was a very large, clearly a power plant. No one's arguing that. Wide open space leading up to the power plant, on the other side of which is the flytrap and the weapons manufacturing plant. Foundation I'm standing on, it's hard to tell what was here. These anchors, well, they do have the diameter of what could have been a flock position, but I don't see any munitions, storage, options. I'm more inclined to think this would have been a pillar leading to some sort of tubing. Today it's hard to gauge the military infrastructure, but still from pictures from already the 70s, you can still see some of the German guard towers and positions that were strewn throughout the complex. Very nice detail of what is probably the administration part of the power plant. Then I will now enter. Another hole in the ground. Are you sensing themes here? This is a perfect place for the SS to set up a secret weapons manufacturing or research lab. It has a massive power plant. It has massive rail links to and from. It is deep inside German territory, far away from any kind of Allied bombing. It already has a security aspect to it. And before the war, there was a munitions development production facility here already that we will see. Also, there are buildings littering all the roads to and from the what is now famous Henge that would looks like guard buildings to me. Indeed this is the old main axis guard house and you can still see the mounting for the heavy steel gate. Of course the Henge is the much disputed what is this thing? The Glocke or the Bell has been claimed to be a special German research program that had been tethered within here and witnesses have testified to seeing it hover within the Henge. Others claim that it is a water tower. V1 piloted Anna Reich flew one once and crashed it and mm. broke her jaw. Said she would never fly one again. So finally, after all this time, I can do what I always wanted to do. Take my little Geiger counter in her center of the hinge. Um, There is a slightly higher level of radiation right here in the center of the henge than on the mountain and further away. 
I, I was prepared to just tell you this was a water tower and now, now, now I see where all the speculations came from. I have now made my observations and what I found is a little bit more disturbing than if this was a tether for a secret project or anti-gravitational as the bill has been claimed to be. They have described a, a research project that they evacuated. It was something so strange. I mean the description of the device they, they worked on that they uh, were never able to explain what was even the purpose of this project. Most unusual details in all this story was that, uh, uh, that this project was codenamed or, or classified as uh, Kriegsentscheidend. And supposedly it was the most secret research project carried out by the Third Reich during the an, entire war. Uh, each experiment with the bell looked so that uh, the bell was placed in an underground chamber room uh, in a former mine. Scientific terms used by the Germans to, who were servicing the bell. One such uh, term was uh, separation of magnetic fields and the other one was vortex compression. The whole thesis behind the Bell program or the Glocke, the Bienenstock, that the Germans supposedly worked on during World War II, that was supposedly tested here as an anti-gravitational device, it's a little unclear, which was supposed to have been counter-rotating spheres of uh, mercury bombarded with huge amounts of electricity. It was supposedly seen by concentration camp inmates that saw it hover. Now, the bell was, according to testimony post-war, about 10 feet tall. For it to be transported to the henge and kept underground, this door is not big enough for an aggregate such as the bell to enter and exit from. I don't take sides, I'm a historian. And these hallways, I could see a small ammunition train on tracks, but nothing very large and cumbersome is going to go in and out of this tunnel. The bell was 10 feet tall. It weighed several tons. It must have done. This is not where it came from. This is impossible to get something that big here. Engineers. Those we're going to take pictures of as we go. So, is this part of the reconstructed part? Do we know? Is this is this new or is that? Uh, some parts can be new. And the, they look like the original part. so many little rooms? Why so many dividers? before the war uh, that the Germans... Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe some of these tunnels uh, exist before the Second War. This and here was for a heavy door. Here's a heavy double door. And then we have a uh, staircase going up to... Okay, so this is, this is uh, ventilation. Shaft. Ven okay, yeah. Okay, so... I hope you all forgive me for not crawling up these rushy stairs. I would, but this is really just a ventilation shaft. And of course the access to the ventilation was would have been a very heavy door. 
so nobody could drop anything explosive or gas like in here. But this is where we have to start paying attention. Take a look at the bricks on the right side coming to the end of this tunnel. I'm doubting this is original and I think maybe something has been covered up here. Now I can't help but notice if we're walking around in a, in a, in a circle, are we, we're circling a building? This is a circle somehow. Is the whole complex round or? Um, no, no. Um, well, this car does something right. right. Now, true to tradition, I'm going down. <laughs> we are going uh, through the corridors in the right direction uh, under the um, Edge. Yes. There's another door. Oh, okay. Yeah. Step. Yeah. Okay. So these grooves were for electrical wiring? Uh, yeah. This is uh, mm -hmm. construction for, for some of uh, uh, wiring and installations. Um, it's really good. It, it is very interesting because there's a lot of electricity that will be, have been sitting on these. And this, running across the hall, this hallway is a little strange. Yeah. Because this would have been here, crossing the hallway. Which means nobody was really expected to run or walk down here. Which means this could have been a, main, a very large maintenance tunnel. Or access tunnel for... Am I, am I completely wrong? And here's, here's another one, spanning the... Uh, so this was not meant for people to walk here, really. This was meant to transport electricity and other stuff. That is interesting. Because I've seen a lot of access tunnels in my life. None of them this big. And here's a dividing line between, it could have been a, Eight. Now this is without a doubt a heavy utility tunnel holding a lot of large electrical cables running in underneath the hinge. I'm not sure what that means. Great. You want he walked me into the wall. All right, young man, go get me a hammer. What's behind the wall? Oh. The tunnel is going um, under the under the hinge. Yeah. And air is coming from that side. This is going under the hinge. Yeah, under the hinge. You can feel air is coming through the holes. So, we're back to what I just said. Get me a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe exist uh, some other entrance. Okay. This is what I knew was going to happen that was going to frustrate me. Is I would come at another end of another tunnel that is closed the radiation level in there is higher. Why is it exactly I want to go into a place where the radiation is higher than that upstairs? What the hell is wrong with me? Anyway. <laughs> Good time to start thinking about those children while I still can. I want to know what's in there so bad. It was driving me crazy. Uh, <laughs> Polish dogs existed here for 500 some years of this breed. For bear hunting? For bear hunting? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Alright puppy dog, you, you and your species have been here for 500 years. Tell me what's underground. Uh, I have two cats. <laughs> yeah, okay, except two cats. Yeah. So this is pointing up towards the munition storage, or is this circling around the hinge? 
Let's take a look at this again. To me, this looks like a dead end wall that has been created. This looks like it was bricked up and the groove in the floor could have been water drainage. It could have been for cables, but it's running into a wall, meaning that there used to be an opening there. Ventilation. Ventilation. Shut. And all these are ventilation or AO. Yeah. That's all water. That could, uh, that could be water drainage. drainage. It, well, if water in the groundwater is assembling, but you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't because guide water. You wouldn't guide water into a tunnel for electrical channeling. That makes no sense. Here. Uh, yeah, but why? Yeah, but I'm uh, saying that. Why this drainage is going down? Not. Not obstacle. Not go up. Not not that grow goes, but uh, it's going down. I don't know, but I don't understand that. What it does tell me is that there is something behind the wall. I mean, I get you have the water drainage tunnels on the floor that would drag water out. I get that, yeah, but going down. it's going down. And some of these bricks and mortar look real new. So now we're tunneling away from the hinge because the hinge is to the right. Hinge is that way. Another access panel. Yeah, this is definitely a utility tunnel. All that electricity up from the power plant nearby would have to be transported here somehow. And guess what I'm seeing? I'm seeing a hole and I'm seeing the outside. Here is the outside. This tunnel could be opened. Uh -huh. And here's the other end. So. If there's the other end of the tunnel, that means the other end of the tunnel mm -hmm. that's closed, we might be able to find. Which this is of course temporary where brick that's put up. That is outside. And that is to the left of the hens. The hens is generally behind us right now, isn't it? The hens would be pretty much that way. Yeah. This is... Here was more of entrance, yeah. And here's another question for you. If it was a water tower that we all think it was, except not really anymore. Okay, this was a heavy coat. There was a heavy door here too. It could have been post-war, it's hard to say. But these tunnels full of electrical cables are leading back under the hinge. If the hinge was a water tower, yeah. that could theoretically be broken or destroyed by attack. Yeah. Why would you put an electrical in cable that important underneath it? Trails on the walls. And something went on here. This was definitely not just small bullets they were making in this place. There's more to it. All right, we just left the tunnels, and this is where I'm going to try to piece it together in my head. Underneath a lot of access tunnels for cabling, water, power. Main power plant was down there. One of the tunnels leads under the hinge. Two access tunnels. There's the out of the other tunnel, and here was a large space. And this is where my problems begin. Okay, so here is my first thought. We have all these cars. We have three rails going in there, and two to each door there. And then we get into tunnels. Uh -huh. A lot of them use, look like large utility tunnels but there's no room in there to store anything. So what are you bringing into the tunnels? Where does it go? There are no rooms. Yeah. 
Well, why do you build three rail tunnels into a mountain where there's nothing? There's no storage space. I thought this isn't here where they would store ammunition, but there's no room. Yeah. There must be more tunnel. Yeah. The Germans were infinitely practical people when it came to stuff like this. They didn't do things without a reason. Something was protected down here. And none of the tunnels are leading us in any direction where any sizable amount of material could have gone. So the question is, if there was something down here, really something bad, the Russians would just have blown the whole thing up, right? Yeah. They would just, they wouldn't have left anything. Mm -hmm. If the Germans had something down here that was really, really bad, they would just have blown it up. They destroyed it, but they knew people would find it. They knew somebody would find their way in here. <sighs> Maybe they redid closed tunnels and redid them and then destroyed the opening as a way of th leading people in, think there's just tunnels this way, but all the side tunnels have been closed off, painted, moured, hidden. Then people would find a tunnel, but they wouldn't find the actual tunnel. From this, it is absolutely clear that there are tunnels leading into the mountains that has been covered up, bricked up, either by the Russians or the Germans or the Polish. I'm not sure, but they are missing. You can see the narrow gauge rails that led into what used to be mines. They're all gone. They're all dead end somewhere. And if it had just been a mine we are covering, there's no reason to cover it up because here in Lower Silesia there's plenty of mines where you can visit and see. And if they're dangerous, they would just cordon them off. This little building had serious access control to gauge what came in and out of this room. And when it came to the henge, if it had been a water tower, where's all the rubble and the debris that usually follows destructions of something as large as a water tower? I'm not saying it wasn't, but I'm saying there is no sign of its destruction. Here we're walking away from the Henge on the old original roads leading down to... Is this a building? Yeah, a building. A building here um, was produced uh, shot materials. Uh, sh oh, shop? Shot. Shot. A weapon? Oh, but you said munition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, project too. Remember how I say there's always a whole access tunnel? What we know for sure, this was a ammunition factory. Okay. This is a heavy reinforced building. Would trains come in? No, 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 no. There was trucks coming and uh, from here uh, to magazines, yeah. So there were tracks from here to the other shops? or? Yeah, yeah. And are going um, next, to, next to magazines, yeah. fascinating to finally actually be here after reading and looking at something. It's never the same to just see it. And this is another one of the production manufacturing. There's always that graffiti. And the first one uh, yeah. leaning down to the hinge well, is down there. Uh, we can see the part of this building uh, but uh, it was uh, really riskant to produce uh, chemi, chemical materials for weapons. And when, uh, before some explosion, yeah, it need walls uh, to save the, the other the, ones. The, the, yeah. So it was made to blow out this way into the rock fair, into the yeah. side of the wall. Yeah. That, that's, see, and that's what I was looking for. Usually that's the roof, and that makes perfect sense. And that's why these walls are missing, because they were, of course, thinner. You see, 
On the outside, there was probably a little brick layer. These are, yes, there are the bricks. So this was to made to be explode outwards and away from the other rooms. Yeah, and other rooms where it can, can be safe. And then there was communication yeah. between some of them. Communication, materials. And of course electrical wire, wiring, I'm assuming, through here and ventilation. here. Ventilation. Yeah. And of course, heavy rebar up there that you don't see in the exploding wall. On the roof, are uh, here uh, in, in the war time too, yeah? Camera flash. It's a... Uh... Now we're finally going in the woods. So all these, tra these trenches, something uh, was here. Buildings? Uh, for we we have knowledge in this uh, place. The problem is the Germans left no drawings, the Russians left no clues, and all the locals had been evacuated after the war. So we really don't know. Storage? Storage. It looks like storage. Yep. Grass on the roof again. And we're going up, I guess. I have noticed one thing about history. It's always a walk uphill. Like I said, there's always a hole in the ground. And here's another hole in the ground. There's the other bunker and the access road. Of course, we're going uphill. Explosive materials was produced after that, they was bringing here uh, on the on the on this area with transport lines and uh, get uh, to this magazine. To this. Uh, so everywhere storage. in the forest, you have these magazine Rep storages. Repository, yeah. And you see that the corridors is corridors. It's uh, town, all right, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but when, uh, um, in the case, an explosion, or, or an explosion, yeah, the... Um, the force would go out the other way. Yeah. Now, what we're seeing up here is signs of the original munition production facility and the bunkers for munition storage. This all makes perfect sense and lines up with what a munition production facility should be. It's a great place for the SS to move in and do their work. This is another turn. Yeah. The first one down there. And you see how thin the, the en entrance here was. This is very thin and there was a very small door for the explosion to easily go up in directions away from where people was. That makes absolutely perfect sense. And then, and the forest is full of these, I see. Well, what is that? That is different. Now, you have all clearly noticed that we went uphill and we are coming up on the side of a mountain, underneath which the tunnels were running into, or must have done so. Close defense, or? Uh, for, for water canal, yeah. Hold that for me. Yeah. Sorry. I'm always curious when you see. Yeah. Post line. Is this DDR or? Yeah, here was working uh, officers. Is this is officer. this DDR or is this uh, one of ours? I don't see. I only see a partial marking. No marking. Germans uh, ego. Yeah, you can see. Is there any? That's right. There's an eagle. This looks like it was dropped here yesterday. And somebody has been here nicely and put these... They tried to make a teacup. You go for a walk through the forest and you don't know what you'll find. Not just World War II, but also many years of Russian occupation and soldiers. Line.
just kind of what a kind of just a reminder that there's always a hole in the ground when you go exploring parallel lines in nature is always interesting and i'm seeing parallel lines what am i looking at if this was a battlefield i would think this would be a running trench but it really isn't because this is this is deeper what is it what is this yeah. Conveyor belt, the belt. Con conveyor, conveyor oh. line, but uh, lower we can see storages. Uh, yes, yeah, we can. Storages for, for, for this material. Is this the building we walked by when we walked up? Mm. No. And from here, the materials uh, will be, will be uh, was uh, sent to the another place of, uh, of uh, research project. So was this a rail or was this a belt? Um, Tra small train, or no? no I think I, I think uh, um, conveyor? conveyor conveyor belt. Yeah. Well, obviously the Russians took it, but obviously something was here. In their construction, the Germans often used heavy conveyor belts for materials to and from, and there was also a drawing as seen here of a cable car running from up here down to the rail station by the power plant. The cars come from one side and go to the second, si the second side. Was this trucks or again? Trucks, trucks. trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is tile. That's a piece of roof tile. It has a nice shape to it. It's mm -hmm. nice. It's not cheap quality. Here we see more classic signs of weapons manufacturing with the blowout walls facing into a safe direction. So the trucks will come down here. And you know what else? This. This I see in a lot of German bunkers yeah. as roofing material on the inside too, and tunnels. I see that again and again. So there would have been a crane. Some continent. Yeah. At the end of the war, when the Germans and SS had evacuated the area, and the Russians moved in and eventually handed over the area to the Polish population, all the Germans were kicked out, leaving absolutely no witnesses in the area to what actually took place here, and the Russians still had to figure it out on their own. And there was what could have been... Was it power? Mark power? Mark power. Oh, so this is where the generator would... Uh. Or... Or... There would have been a. There was a door small, on it. For, for small materials. So. There, there was a door here. There was room for hinges. Next room in here. No. Connecting to. It looks like room for, for dangerous materials. Dangerous materials. Yeah. Yeah. I use one of these again. Yeah. With hole and axles. This is very interesting. This is not. Well, I guess it makes it easier when there's a gap between the buildings. And for security, there would be gaps between the buildings. This was all part of the weapons storage. Here, we had the hooks for to connect with others for camouflage. I'm guessing you had netting and trees. So this would have been hard to spot from the air. This would actually have been quite hard to spot from the air. The ventilation uh, was was uh, really um, key. Yeah, on the high level. Yeah. It actually, it smells like uh, 
Sawdust. What horses walk on in here? I mean, at the time, there would have been a cement floor. I was just saying, this is... Interesting. Dirt. Is it the dirt? Is from the brick? No, from from the from the bricks dirt. Material. It's just the, there's uh, not bricks and and wood material. It yeah, it out. is. Which would not have been here at the time of the war because that would have been very flammable. Now I would find it very hard to believe that if the SS moved a special project in here in these mountains, what we know they did, and underneath inside the mountains they would leave all these wonderful secure buildings up here unused. Of course the Russians took everything they could and removed whatever they found, but still I'm wondering what part these buildings could have played in the special projects that were going on underneath. Um, this was definitely a building built for a purpose. One of the things I've noticed about Poland, there's not a lot of signs in other languages than Polish. Some of them look like they might say trespassing. Some of them look like they might say, I shouldn't go here, there, or don't eat this, don't play ball on the grass. But I don't read Polish. Mm. Okay, so this is definitely big enough for trucks to drive through here. Conveyor. The conveyor. Uh, conveyor, yeah. So, so that's the way the conveyor belt ran up there to the flight trap behind us. Here we have the pillars for the conveyor belt that will transport the ammunition. The stairs is, I don't even know what, but it was certainly built for a purpose. There is no doubt that this whole installation was built specifically for what it was. And here's the truck trench that I'm guessing this pulls up to a bunker. So the trucks could drive in one end and then out the other. Over here. Now this should be relatively simple to figure out. Trucks go in in safety and load munition in safety. But it doesn't seem to be that straightforward when you really look at this. Definitely uh ask why uh, why Nazi to need so high level of security for transport some materials when uh, here we, we are seeing only two storages little storages yeah. and they're very small very small yeah cabling yeah. hold this for electrical cabling and then you had, it's hard to see if there was even a door. Three oh, hundreds. But yeah, this is very strange. And this is a very strange shape. I mean, this is a very unusual shape of a opening for, for German engineering. You have not seen that. And that's a different, that would probably have been a ladder here. I would guess. Then again, these are these are at a different spacing. This is a different spacing than this, so something would have been sitting here. Not a ladder. That would be a reason for a ladder. And these holes up there could have been part of protrusion for camouflage. They would have been camouflage netting over yeah, this electric, driveway. Electrical. Uh, electrical. Electric. Yeah. And this whole thing would have been covered up yeah. uh, with camouflage and everything so it couldn't be seen from the air at all. But these uh, very interesting looking structures. And what's interesting, it doesn't look like there's room for a heavy gate. It doesn't look like there's a very large steel gate. And yet it is incredibly protected and hidden 
and apparently the Nazis trained mosquitoes to attack anybody here and those mosquitoes are still here. For comparison I wanted to show you what munition storage bunkers typically looked like on the Atlantic Wall or a bigger one here but I'm going to take you to Jutborg to show you what the German munition storage World War I looked like. Jutburg was pretty much a military town that was built before World War I by the Kaiser and there was a huge ammunition storage and manufacturing plant here and these are the bunkers in the forest surrounding the town. This But this electrical wire doesn't look like a Russian area. Does this look like old World War II? It looks like a 30s. This is, what are we looking at, 1 meter, 1 and a half? So this is Baustärke 3. All style electrical installation. That uh, China? Yeah, porcelain. Porcelain, yeah. And that is the, which year is the Third Reich or Third uh, Reich? Or? If there was electrification, it could be from uh, the early 20th century. Be 1910, it could be 1930. But I would guess 1910 before World War I. One door here, the second door here, and the third door covered the whole entrance. Okay, here. so this was more important than just dry storage. Also I assume it was for explosives yeah. and I assume also the roof could be weak and the walls are strong. In case of an explosion, so. the power, uh, the, the pressure goes up and the Not areas out. left and right of this are protected. Yeah. In, In this box I think there was an electrical installation and this uh, yeah, there's a... It was for the cable, and there you can see uh, some remains of, of an electrical installation. I think it is like there, and it was sticked over there. The reason why I wanted you to see this is because the munition plant built here in Ludwigsdorf was built after World War I, before World War II. And if this is the technology and the storage facilities used in Germany during the time of World War I and World War II, what we're looking at in Ludwigsdorf with these small ones are very strange. That's from the, uh, the stand from the conveyor belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then come up there. Hmm. You look at this, I'm looking at an area that's divided into sections and some of them have more of a security perimeter, more than regular ammunition would have been uh, produced here. From the security measures that's taken, this was not just an ammunition factory, but we don't yet know really what else, but that is definitely my first impression. But all excavation and research is forbidden by the Polish government, just like Andreas in Switzerland is not allowed to dig in the bunkers he's found, or in Germany, or the eye carves are closed. This comes down to one very simple fact. If you have nothing to hide, you will show your cards. If you have something to hide, you will not let historians look. So what is it you are hiding? What is it the governments, the archives, the militaries, are keeping secret so many years later? this series I will always give you my initial thoughts while I'm on the ground and memories are fresh. Granted, this is the first day I ever saw the Henge. Later on, having a web chat with Joseph, something came to mind. I noticed that in the center of the Henge, there's this little round, looks like a fire pit, which it might be, but it could also be a hole leading down to the underground tunnels and what really surprised me was when I was looking over the building there was another one that was identical and certainly in the tunnels beneath I saw no circular hole in the roof so that's something I need to get back to 
I'm going to gather my thoughts and come back here in a couple of days. You want to come here. You want to come see this. Um, not necessarily because of the rumor of the UFO. Because, come on, come on. We were all kind of, that's a little high flying. Um, I, I get the effort, but this is worth seeing for so many more reasons. And something went on here. This was definitely not just small bullets they were making in this place. There's more to it. On the opposing side of the valley are the mining company buildings from the mine that it used to be. But I wanted to take a look at the slope coming up on the opposing side because there were some interesting bunkers that Christoph played in as a kid and they had a very interesting setup. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, under, under the, 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 the ground is, is uh, a bunker room. So we have a little two-man bunker, little firing position. That's it, Bob. Yeah. Which there is was an entrance. Yeah. I don't see it now. Must be an entrance down here. Here. As we all know, there's always a hole behind you and a spider in my hair. Yeah, so this is defending. Okay, I was wrong. So here we have still defensive firing. Very, very rudimentary. No double access interlocking fields of fire. Just access control for this room. And when I said room, obviously what I meant was a bunch of hallways underground. Holy shit. Here you have single arched. What was this? Okay, so this demarked the border. Just for a defensive position, and here comes up to air, that's what I thought. Two of them? Why is there two of them? What the hell is this? No, I yeah, that's locked off. I get that, but why is there two? I see I don't see the bed hangers I'm used to. Oh, saw different things. It's full of stuff. This was bricked up to the outside for some reason. Ah! Jesus. And this is bricked off, which means there's probably something behind there, or it could be dead end. Again, I'm not seeing bed hangers anymore. So this is one of the bunkers that was used to secure the inner area of the hinge. And it goes on to another. Actually, that looks like a top of vision port without a platform. Here's another one. This makes no sense.
there are four. This is basically two hallways divided up into four rooms with a, s a few smaller rooms. But there's four emergency exits, which are also air towers, of course, and a very rudimentary machine gun position at the front. This makes no sense. This makes no sense. It's not the only question I have. This makes no sense. Maybe, maybe this way was, was really important. important. But what I don't understand, there's four emergency exits for this small little bunker. Four. I don't see that on the Atlantic Wall. And that's another air tower for another one that is not connected with those. Yeah, from from uh, this bunker you, you see only this, this you area. You do? Yeah. And, and the t that looks... Not... not the, the, the you don't even see the road. Yeah. You don't see the road, you don't see the... You actually... You see into this. I mean, the hill we're on is probably hollow. And here's another air with staircases. Again, this is filled up. Yeah, but for what? Uh, which is underneath here, but what the entrance? Yeah. There's no entrance. I'm clearly standing on it, unless it's back here. Okay, it's here. Yeah. Here's the entrance to this one, but this is not an. This is just an entrance with no. And again, everywhere we see these, see them. I'm getting to be very familiar with those. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, what's this? Always remember, there's always a hole behind Shut. you. It's, well, possible. At this point in time, anything's possible. So this was the door with very, very simple firing positions for self-defense. You got a semi-arch, and you go, this is just a tunnel to an emergency exit. This is just so strange that there are these tunnels. This could have been a firing ah. position. This could be firing towards the road, but there's only one. Shut window. No. 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 That's what I keep thinking. There's something, there must be something else here. Except that. No. This is the air, uh, this is the emergency exit with the air. Uh. And then a lot of crap's been thrown down here. I get that, but there's nothing else to this tunnel. There's no reason for this to be here. You have two tiny, small, not well protected firing positions. So at least it was not, it was, I mean, for security duty, maybe, you know, for local police, I mean, security, but for fighting, actual attack, no. But what would you do? To, why? Why you build a little room like this with, with an, uh, the other hallways and the, the other one, you have four of these. There's no, there's no hangers or installed to, for beds. This could very well have been an installation for a periscope. 
This could have been a periscope and this could have been a firing position. Although it's, and, and you look at the cement. This cement and fiber, this is, this is not the typical German um, cement. There's a lot of, it used to be a little finer in between the grains. This looks to be. But there's rebar in it, so it is what it is, but. It's maybe gneiss. It's material from uh, Riza yeah. tunnels, yeah? <clears throat> well, that makes sense. You build with what you have. But, but, oh. What is the function of this place, though? This is yes, this is facing the road, but it is flimsy. There's no interlocking fields of fire here. There's no. And you get it right next to the factory. And I'm guessing there's a lot more of these. No, it, it, it's not. Maybe a guard post. Maybe a guard post. Yeah, yeah. A check, like a regular checkpoint. Yeah, checkpoint. It's it's possible. Yeah. So if there's a it, checkpoint for the people going that way, yeah, that means there's something that way. For for, for power plants. But zone. this check, or well, yes, yeah, it could be a checkpoint for either way, coming yeah. in here or going that way. Yeah. There's a lot of secrets in these mountains. There's the power plant or the factory fire trap behind it. There are bunkers with strange fields of fire and my only thought tactically is they're protecting this path which makes me think what is up this path. You have here installation with two exits a relatively small bunker firing protective two exits a very strange field of fire Which makes me want to know what's up here. What is this position protecting? A long time ago, there used to be a road here. You can tell all the all this rubble roughly the same size. Now, what makes the most sense to me, being a munitions plant, would be a road leading away from that large bomb magnet that is the power plant where you put more bunkers for ammunition storage. That's what I would expect to find here leading away from the flytrap. And here's what looks like part of a foundation. Could have been another access control reclaimed by nature. This is hard to tell because these small roads branch off in several directions and it's a very large forest. However, there are some very familiar footprints in the floor. Again, nature's reclaiming a lot of things, but that hill here, but here I'm walking out on, okay, I know what this is. All right, I don't know if you can tell, here's one outcropping. Here's one entrance, here's one outcropping that the tree has fallen onto. It's symmetric, it's parallel, has the right height, it is definitely not natural. So we're back to nature giving up a little bit. And I'm standing presumably on the roof, what I would imagine is probably munition storage parallel a young trees on top of it makes perfect sense you can actually see how it rounds here down to the sides this clearly man-made sticks out in two directions and it's covered up on all sides by relatively young trees. One of the things 
they teach you in boot camp. One of the first things is when applying camouflage, remember in nature there are no straight uh, vertical lines. And here's clearly symmetry. But without the proper ground penetrating equipment, it's hard for me to determine this triangular top and another one over here. Yeah, well, again, nature didn't do this. Of course, people are digging here. This is man-made. Deep groove in the ground here. Could have been a protective trench. You were overlooking terrain. Here you never know. If it was a battlefield, I would know what to look for. This is a production manufacturing facility. And we don't really know what happened. It makes it very hard to guess. And this is what we always get here. Every time I look for an answer and find something that resembles an answer, it comes with another question. The official story for that whole installation was it was a munition plant. Okay, now if you buy that, munition was produced in the outskirts of Berlin by the army. What was all the SS people doing here? Why was it so top secret, highly uh, protected and guarded? And why can we then still not find the papers? See, every time we come up with an answer, there's more questions. There's nothing here makes sense. For now, I'm going back to the castle, and yes, I am staying at the Schloss Fürstenstein, and I'm going to have some of their lovely dinner. While we get ready for tomorrow, we're going to the Riese Tunnels, and there's a few things I did not expect to see there. I think there's a fairly strong possibility we're looking at a heavy water production facility, and there's quite a few reasons. Now we will go and I will show you a room for Hitler. <laughs>